now that the top has been milled, it's perfectly parallel with the bottom, and I can hold it like this in the vise, and it will be held very securely at this point. I don't need to, because it's clamping between here. And I will proceed to mill off this to clean it up, and then using this long fluted uh, 3 8 end mill, I'm going to come in here and clean it here probably will not yield a very good finish but we'll give it a try so just like that this is my finishing pass and I'm climb milling now there is quite a shrink hole there in the middle and just a little residue of it that you can see and some porosity there and I'm not going to worry about that. I'm ready to uh, mill the top of the cylinder right here, just clean it up a little bit. But uh, I didn't feel that it could be supported properly just holding it in the vise. But now it could have been held onto an angle plate. But this is just waste stock here and here, and it's sandwiched between the two. And then I've taken the little round and sharp square and put it within the vise here to make sure that the uh, side here of the, the base is perpendicular. And I've got two little C-clamps back here holding onto that. And we're exerting pressure right here, but overall there still isn't a lot of support from here on up. I think you can understand that, but with a light cut, I believe it's going to be just fine. That takes care of the end of the cylinder. And I stepped that down just a little bit here on the uh, valve body, just to define it, no particular purpose, just for appearance that I happen to like it. Now this is really the setup I need for doing the uh, drilling and reaming, but I'm up way too high when you, when you include the, the height of the vise and everything, so I'm going to use a different setup for that, and probably angle block, angle plate brother. I'm changing some of the dimensions just slightly over the original. This has a 5 8 bore and this will have a 9 16 bore. This is a quarter inch valve and it'll remain quarter inch. So now I'm going to put some layout die on the end here and uh, lay out those holes. Get ready to drill and ream. If at all possible, do much of your layout work on a surface plate with a surface gauge. It's certainly an accurate way to do it. So I just drew the center line across, and that'll be the center of both the bore and the valve. Now I need to locate them in the other direction. All right, here's what the layout looks like. Now, I only uh, put the circles on there for your benefit. They aren't necessary, but that's the 9 16 bore and the quarter inch hole here for the, um, the valve drawn along the center line. And of course, all this location could be done on a milling machine with a digital readout without any need for layout at all. But I'm going to do it the layout method here just for a variety. So it's ready to go over to the milling machine. There are times when a setup takes much longer than the actual machining operation, and this certainly has been one of them. I think I've been working here for about an hour just with this setup and trying to figure it out, and I told you I didn't want to use the vise, so I'm using two angle plates, and in fact I'm going to sandwich the work between the two angle plates so that I can clamp it and eliminate all vibration because of the uh, inherent weakness of the casting right here. Now, that won't be a factor at all for, for running a little model like this, but in order to machine it, it, it needs to be held properly. So i got two angle planes, plates, and what takes so long is finding the clamps that are the right size and the, the bolts. So you can see these bolts aren't the right length, but I started out with this angle plate, which is about, well, it's uh, five inches high. I squared it up real well, like this, then tightened it. And then I uh, found another angle plate, and uh, I could only find one bolt that would fit, or the, the slots here do not line up with the milling machine slots, so I had to use two different kind of, of clamps. But I'm going to put the, uh, the work in between the two, 
and I've already adjusted this so that I've got a pretty good fit and I will use another square to make sure that I get it perfectly square in this plane and then a good heavy clamp here and several other clamps over here and I think I've got it. The setup is complete and I'm ready to drill and ream but uh, that's enough for today. It's been a long day and this is the end of day one. See you tomorrow. It's day two of the build and when I first came down here this morning I almost laughed at this uh, Rube Goldberg uh, nightmare setup that I got but it's going to work very well. It just looks kind of sloppy. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is to drill and ream this quarter inch hole for the valve. The spool valve. Some people call it a piston valve. Both are correct. Probably other names for it too. Now I've lined up the table or the spindle with the center of the uh, layout here using this wiggler and I've shown that in other videos. So now I'll take the wiggler out, put a combination starter drill in there and uh, give it a go. Now I also have zeroed out the uh, digital readout now so I can come back to that point should I need to. And that's all we need. Now I'll put in the 1564 drill bit and drill all the way through in preparation for the quarter inch uh, chucking reamer. Now, it's typical that you would drill 1 64th under the ream size, so that's why I'm selecting the 15 64ths. I won't show the drilling, I'll skip right to the reaming. Now I've got a quarter inch chucking reamer. Quickly that hole is reamed and now I move on to the larger one. I'm all lined up with the other center punch mark and I'm ready to use the center drill here but before I do let me explain something to you that I was going to drill and ream that hole and I already got my reamers and everything laid out and I changed my mind because I want to do this just a little bit differently than I did the last uh, uh, engine so I'm going to drill this out to one half inch and then bore it to the final size using the boring head just for variety and that'll give a nice accurate hole and hopefully a good finish also. So that's the plan. Here's that 15 64th drill again. Uh, that's close enough to quarter inch to consider it my pilot drill. I like to put plenty of lubricant on it as I get into a deep hole. And that's nothing more than kerosene that I'm using. That works good and it's cheap. And I'm through. And this is the half inch size. It's ready for boring, so I will set up the Criterion boring head. I've mounted the boring head uh, into a three-quarter collet. It has a straight shank on it, and I've already mounted uh, a boring bar in it, and, and these are boring bars, and all different sizes and lengths, and uh, this is about inch and a half long almost, so it required a relatively long 
boring bar. And you don't want to use any longer one than necessary because there's certainly always some flex in a boring bar. So I have to take light cuts, especially as I come down to dimension. And if you look here, there's a little graduated dial here. And using an Allen wrench, I can adjust the uh, size. So I already took a trial cut and cleaned up the hole, and it's producing quite a nice finish. The boring bar is held in there in one of these uh, holes. There's actually three holes there with set screws. If I can show you, well, there's a hole here, also one here. So the boring bar can be put in in different positions to accommodate different size holes. Now when I bore, I will not use the lever feed for the quill. I will use this crank. I can certainly do it by under power, but I'm just going to hand crank it. I've already taken a reading now and I'm just a little bit over one half inch. So I won't take you through all of the uh, uh, boring because it becomes a little bit boring and tedious at least to watch. I enjoy doing it though. It's a single point tool. Carbide tipped. I'm going to dial in about five thousandths, take a cut and then I'll stop, measure it and see where I'm at. pass I will feed very slowly and take a very uh, light cut to allow for any springiness in the boring bar. I can also set a stop so that I know how deep I'm going but since this is a through hole rather than a blind hole it's uh, not a problem because I can see the boring bar coming through. Also uh, the chips drop out the bottom which is nice because I don't have to worry about chips jamming up. In order to measure the hole, I'm using a telescoping gauge. I've already set that, and just along with a micrometer, I'm presently at 425 thousandths, and I'm going to take it to 562. Now, I make my piston to fit the bore, so should I be a little bit oversized, doesn't really matter because I have to turn the piston down anyway, but you can get it right to the thousandth if you want to. I'm not going to try real hard here because it doesn't matter. The piston will have to uh, fit the bore. I'll take off another, uh, well, I've got over 20, i got about 35 thousandths to go, so I'm going to take 10 thousandths off this time. This is about a 10,000 cut. I changed my mind that I am in fact using power feed and this is either my last pass or second to the last but you can see that I'm uh, feeding down automatically and when this hits the blue stop the power feed will kick off. You can see shavings coming out but it's a relatively light cut. And I might take one more pass if needed, but I'm going to be pretty close to the dimension. Did you hear it click off? The power feed has stopped. I just took a reading with the telescoping gauge, and I like using one of these a lot better than trying to stick a caliper in there. And these are quite accurate too. And I'm right at Right on 562, so I'm done and ready to take it out of the machine.
There it is. Quite a nice finish. That light's almost a little too bright. I was going to run a hone through there, or sandpaper, but I do not think I'll need it. And it's, it's really right on with this uh, hand reamer too. This is a 9 16 hand reamer. Pretty good fit, but yet I don't have to force it to go in. So that bore is done. Now I'm at the drill press and I'm going to drill the hole for the main bearing and that's uh, going to be reamed 3 16 so I'm drilling it one size under the jobber and I'm just at the drill press. Notice how I've got this held in the vise with the bottom up against the fixed jaw so I'm pretty well assured that it's square. And now I'll ream it 3 sixteenths. And I just float this around, and that was a pre-cast or pre-center punch hole. As you can see in this uh, rough casting, that hole was uh, actually cast in. In other words, I pre-punched or pre-located it when I designed the pattern. So that hole is drilled and reamed. This is a rough flywheel. It hasn't been machined yet on the periphery anyway. And then I drilled a 1 16th hole for oil and countersunk it just a little bit with a hand countersink. And that's how I'll oil the main bearing. Now it's kind of uh, arbitrary as to what uh, operations I perform next, but I believe what I'll do is make the head for it next. Next I'm going to make the tiny little cylinder head and whatever you do, do not cut off a, a, a thin disc like this that is hard to handle. Now when I made this one, if you watch this video, this previous video, you remember that I drilled the holes into the cylinder head first and then transferred them onto the head. Now in today's project, I'm going to do just the opposite. I'm going to drill the holes in the cylinder head and then later we'll transfer them onto the uh, uh, block itself. And I need, again, four holes. It's going to look something like this for number 440 screws, which aren't very big. I'm going to use the rotary table and uh, drill four holes 90 degrees apart. And there'll be no layout necessary for that. So let's go over to the mill where I've already installed the rotary table. 